The story of a people is told best by those who live it out daily. And when the history of that community is informative, inspirational, and insightful, it should then be shared with the world. The Clio Exchange does that. I sat in Texas in 1957 on pins and needles, wondering what was going to happen to you guys in Little Rock. Tell me what you went through to prepare. Well, I, I think the... Uh... You really have to see, the, see it in terms of a backdrop that none of us expected uh, until that morning, the first day of school, that the governor was going to call out the National Guard to bar our entrance. I mean, it was the biggest shock to everybody. And, and one of the issues that uh, gets uh, overlooked, Little Rock was very early in the uh, southern school districts that attempted to desegregate. 1950, 57. So that uh, Forbes basically used uh, the Little Rock Central High School incident as an opportunity to prove his segregationist uh, roots. So the first day that we went to school, uh, there were eight of us that went to one part of the, one side of the school, and the pictures that are shown of Little Rock most people still have seared in their image the picture of Elizabeth Eckford with the mob behind her. And Elizabeth, the reason she was separated from the, the, uh, the eight of us is that she didn't have a telephone and didn't get the instructions of which end of the school. And uh, some of the people have been there. It's a big school. It's uh, two or three city blocks. Uh, so that um, I was like you. When I got home that evening, I said, what have I, you know, what is this? But I also knew uh, as, as a kid growing up that uh, I had uh, been seared by what I call the petty inconveniences of Jim Crow. Uh, the water fountains, not being able to go to the, uh, uh, to the movie theaters, the restaurants we couldn't get into, uh, the jobs that, uh, uh, I knew people were qualified but uh, weren't hired for. And, and I thought that, that if, as a young person, if I had an opportunity during my childhood to change a part of that, I wanted to change it. I wanted to be there as a change agent. And the beauty, I think, for all nine of us is that we came out of families that they believed that. Now, you know, I, I had a neighbor who said to me, there was a three-week period in which uh, when we didn't get into school and when uh, President Eisenhower finally called in the 101st Airborne, the neighbor came up to me and said, uh, boy, you, you know, you're messing things up for us because we're the ones who are going to take the brunt of it. And you kids are just, you know, you'll be gone and we'll have to sit here and suffer. But I think he represented the minority view. Uh, that most African-American people in Little Rock, while they may have been fearful about the future, I mean, about the, the present, mm -hmm. they knew that they wanted to see a change, and change didn't come easily. I mean, whether you were Jackie Robinson or uh, Rosa Parks, and, and, and I was R Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott was something that was, again, an inspiration to me, that I watched as a child, as you did our story, I watched Montgomery unfold. I watched those people walk rather than riding that bus. I watched them bring that bus company to finally negotiate with them. And I thought, hey, this is what we ought to be doing. This is the way we can't change this thing by it being given to us. We got to change it from the inside. How did you handle the, the anxiety that must have been there the summer of 57, as you were thinking about going to this high school, considering the fact that you were on the honor society in your school and, and obviously well, very successful. Like most teenagers, up until they finally determined who the transfer students were going to be, I was oblivious to it. I mean, I was enjoying my summer. I had a summer job. In fact, I had a job uh, working at a country club in the locker room. And uh, I, I got a, I got a, 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 a sneaking uh, a impact of uh, what it was 
about to mean to the city. There was a fellow who was white, who was my age, and, and uh, when I was the worker and he was the member. <laughs> but we, uh, you know, we, we sat around and, and uh, talked about the world and all of that. And then the day that they, the newspapers announced that we were going to go to Central, he came screaming into the uh, locker room. He says, how could you do this? He was such a nice fella. <laughs> and a light went on in my head that said, uh-oh, this may be something slightly different. But 